Hello, everyone. Uh, today is Wednesday, April 29th. If you are on pace with us, um, getting through the month of April here. So we are going to talk about another factoring method. So today, if you look here, we are finally learning the last factoring type. So we will have knocked out all six of these types of factoring methods. Um, of course, we save the most challenging one for last. That is when you are factoring um, by unfoil with a number in front of the x squared. And I say it's the most challenging, uh, but not necessarily for honors kids. A lot of times I will find that kids in my functions and pre-calculus class sometimes struggle with this method, but it's because they don't have a lot of good number sense and they don't see the patterns as well as some kids do when they're in an honors class. All right, so we are going to, we looked at the schedule. So, yep, like I said, this is our last method and um, we're going to do this for three days. The note sheet's gonna last you for two days. Uh, the, today's worksheet will last you for two days and then I have a third day. Um, and then we're gonna get into a review next week, Monday, and then your test will be on Tuesday. All right, now we have spent some time to filling in this factoring guidelines. What, what type of factoring methods to use? Keep in mind, when we talk about factoring something that is a trinomial just with a, a number in front of the x squared, we are going to be in this column here. And we are again going to try to take out a perfect uh, or a greatest common factor. Most of them today will not be perfect square trinomial. We are going to be unfoiling. So you have already done a very nice job of unfoiling problems that look like this a squared plus bx plus c, where the number in front of the x squared, there wasn't one there. So it was like a one, right? But today we're going to do, there definitely is a number in front of that x squared. And so we're going to learn how to FOIL or factor those. Okay, so I hope you've printed off the note sheet. If not, um, you can pause the video and do that now or just be taking notes in your notebook. But this is the last factoring note sheet that we're gonna, going to do. And like I said, it's going to last us two days. All right, so here's what I would like you to do. Looking here, you can see that these are factors. Right? We could, if we wanted to solve, we could set those equal to zero and figure out what our x values are. What I would like you to do is go ahead and FOIL that. So if you need to, pause the video and FOIL that. When I FOIL, I have my first term it will get me 6x squared. My outside is negative 14x. My inside is a negative 12x. And last, Negative times a negative gets me a positive 28. I can combine these two terms there. So I have 6x squared minus 26x plus 28. All right. So here's what's happening today. We're starting here and learning how to go backwards. All right. Because we want to start with our trinomial and get back to the factors. Now, this is still a method of unfoil. You are basically thinking about how am I undoing the foiling process, the first, the last, the outside, and the inside. And the method that it's just a guess and check kind of method, only I want you to be smart about how you guess and check. Um, all right, so let's try one here. Example one, you know here at the end, we want to end up with two factors, okay? Because there's a number in front of the x squared here, you got to think, all right, how could I multiply and get 2x squared? Well, thankfully, there's only one way to do that. We can only do 1 times x and a 2 times x. So we're going to have a 2x and an x, or a 2x times a 1x. That would get me 2x squared in the first term. So you are always starting here first, okay? Then I want you to go back here. This is where you are looking second, the last term. What numbers are you gonna put here in the last spot to get that negative nine? Well, there's a couple options, right? 
I could do one and nine. And keep in mind, it's negative. So one of these guys is positive and one's negative. I could be doing three and a three. They don't both work. You can't just put a one and a nine in here and a three and a three and think that we're necessarily going to do it right. So you have to, some kids can see it right away, thinking how, depending upon what I put in here, how am I going to get a positive seven in the middle when I do the outside and the inside in the foil process? Okay. Well, the reason why it's called the guess and check method and use your eraser is you need to try one. So if I put a three and a three in there, right? Um, and it has to be a negative nine. So one of these needs to be positive and one's negative. You need to check to see if you have the right answer. Well, my first term I know is right because it's 2x squared. And I know my last term is right. It's negative nine. But how about the middle? I have a negative 6x here and a positive 3x. Well, negative 6x plus 3x will get me negative 3x's, and I wanted 7x. So it's not going to be 3 and a 3. I'm going to have to erase that. So it must be that it's the 1 and the 9. So I cross it off. I should have had an eraser here, and I'm going to make that a 9 and a 1. Maybe I'll just rewrite it. So 2x plus 9 and an x minus 1. So that one was no good. If I do my out first term, we know that's right. And we know my last term, negative 9, is right. But how about the middle? Well, I have a negative 2x and a positive 9x. Negative 2x and a positive 9x gets me 7x, which is what I wanted. So this must be the correct set of factors. Okay, let's take a look at number 3. All right, when I look at um, my first term here, which is where you're always starting, think to yourself, how can I get 10? 1 and 10 and a 2 and a 5. How can I get my last term, a negative 6x squared? Well, it could be that I go 1 and 6 and a 2 and a 3. And I need to end up, and because remember, this is a negative 6, one of these is going to be positive and one's negative. So the reason why it's called the guess and check method is if you truly aren't good with number patterns, you are just going to be checking a bunch of different combinations until you get the one that works. Others of you are going to be able to kind of play with the numbers here and try to figure out a way to get the 11 in the middle. Okay. So if I think to myself, all right, I'm going to try a 2 and a 5. And at the end, maybe I try a 1 and a 6. And remember, there's x's here, so 1x and a 6x. And for now, you can either think about which one you want to make the positive and which one the negative. If, if let's say, you added them together and you got a negative 11x instead of a positive 11x, that just means you have to switch where you have your positive and your negative. So I might try this as a positive and that as a negative. When I do my outside, I have negative 12x. And when I try the inside, I have a positive 5x, which would get me negative 7x's. So that can't be the combination that I want. All right. So I try my next one. Instead of uh, 1 and 6, maybe I try a 2 and a 3. So 2x and a 3x. And I make this a negative and that a positive. When I do my outside, I get 6x. And when I do the inside here, I get negative 10x. Well, that's negative 4. It still isn't the right combination. So I need to try another one, right? So we keep going. I'm going to stick with my 2 and my 5. Only now, I'm going to, instead of the 2 here and the 3 there, I'm going to switch them around. 2x, or 3x there, and the 2x there. Because I'm kind of seeing something in my head already. This is going to get me 15x's, 
and that's going to get me 4x's, which if I subtract them will get me 11. So this will be my positive, and that will be my negative. If I FOIL that, I get 10. The outside gets me negative 4x, and the inside gets me 15x, which is the 11x that I wanted, and my last term is negative 6x. All right, we're going to do one more, not two more on this side. Try number nine, or sorry, number five on your own. Pause the video and see if you can come up with the correct combination that's going to get you nine at the start, a negative eight at the end, and six in the middle when you add the outside and the inside together. So pause the video and try five. All right, so when I look here, my nine is either going to be a one and a nine or a three and a three. The 8 could be 1 and 8 or a 2 and a 4. And it's going to be a positive and a negative, which means we're basically subtracting our outside and our inside to get us the 6. So many of you guys are going to try all different combinations here to get the right one. Uh, one thing that I notice a lot of students doing many times is just trying to match things up here. Like they might think, well, 9 and 1 is 9, 8 and 1 is eight and so if I add if I were to subtract those I'd only get one right so I look here four times three is twelve and three times two is six and when I subtract those so if I make that negative I will get six in the middle so that tells me my combination is going to be three x and three x my three I'm going to multiply by four and this 3, I'm going to multiply by 2. I want the 12 to be positive, so that means this outside has to be positive, and the inside is negative. And if you FOIL that, we would have the right combination. All right, one more on this front side, number 7. All right, so there's parentheses in here. Definitely makes it uh, look complicated, but it's not too bad. I'm going to do a substitution here. Let u equal x plus 1. Okay. So if I substitute it, so I have a 2, and now I'm substituting for x plus 1. So 2u squared minus my substitution of u minus 10. So now we are looking for how to get 2u squared. Well, it must be a 2u and a u. The correct combination for 10. So I'd like you to pause the video and see if you can come up with the right 10 that you need. Is it 1 and 10 or is it 2 and 5 so that you get a negative 1 in the middle? Okay, if you tried it, you should have found this needs to be a negative 5 and this has to be the positive 2. If I FOIL that, I will have negative 5u and a positive 4, which would get me negative u. All right, a lot of times when this happens, kids are excited that they found the right combination, but don't forget to go back now and substitute the u in. So I've got 2, and now instead of u, x plus 1, minus 5, here, and x plus 1, plus 2. So I have some cleaning up to do. 2x plus 2. There, I can make that a plus 3. So in my last step here, I can take this 2 and minus 5 and combine those. And that would be the correct way to factor that. Okay, on the back, I would like us to do um, just one of these together. So flipping your paper over. Notice on the back side here, you have a bunch of problems here. Uh, actually, we're going to do two of them. We're going to do one and two together. It says solve using the following, um, solve each of the following by using a combination of GCF, DTS, PST, and unfoil. And then we're going to use the zero product to solve. So when I look at number one, there is not a greatest common factor here. Is it a difference of two squares? Well, no, because there's not two terms here. Is it a perfect square trinomial? 
Well, no, because this does not have a square root. So I'm going to have to unfoil it. So you think about all the ways you can get 6 and all the ways you could get a negative 10, so a positive and negative, 1 and 10, 2 and 5. Okay, and take your time, pause your video, and see if you can come up with how you're going to um, match these numbers up to get an 11 in the middle. Okay, well, hopefully you found the right combination. When we look here, um, I'm trying to get an 11. So I noticed right away if I make that a positive 15 and the 2 and the 2 a negative 4, that would get me 11. So I set up my two parentheses, and I'm going to have a 2n and a 3n. And notice I took the 2 times the other 2, so that's my outside. And I want that to be negative, so it's going to be negative 4 in there. And 3 times the 5 gets me a positive 15n. So I kind of went through that fast. Make sure that you understand that that, if I were to FOIL this, I would get that back. All right. I'm not real good at doing these in my head. So the zero product property, if I set that equal to zero and set that one equal to zero, here I would subtract 5 over and divide by 2. So if n is negative 5 halves, we would get 0. Here I'm going to add 2 and divide by 3. So 2 thirds would be my other one. All right, last one for us to do together, number 2. Looks pretty big, right? However, a um, couple things here. Right away I notice there's a greatest common factor. I can take a 6y out of all those terms. So I will have a 6y, and then when I take that out of each term, 3y squared plus 11y minus 4. Okay, the bummer is there's still a number in front of that y squared. Kids will try to take out 18, but you can't take 18 out of here. So um, we're stuck with this number here, 3. So I'm going to leave my 6y alone. Oh, the nice thing is with 3, there's only one way to get 3. So you know there's a 3y times a y. But there's two ways to get 4. 1 times 4 and a 2 times 2. I need to get 11 in the middle. So grab your pencils and your eraser and pause the video and see if it's the 2 and the 2 or the 4 and the 1. Well, it's 4 and 1. So if you go minus 1 plus 4, check that that's 12y on the outside, negative 1y on the inside to get me 11. All right, now I do the zero product property. 6y could be the zero. 3y minus 1 could be the zero or y plus 4 could be the 0. If I divide by 6, y equals 0 is one of my solutions. Here I'm going to add 1 over, divide by 3, so 1 third, and finally subtract 4. Okay, so a lot of uh, using your noggin here today. See if uh, you're able to come up with the right combinations to get you the correct factors. And then tomorrow, we're going to continue on this note sheet. So when you get your stuff ready to start working on tomorrow, have this note sheet available. Have a good day, you guys.